Do you ever try to make big life decisions and regret it after the fact? But when you made the decision, you were almost certain that it was the correct one. Or sometimes you can't pick between one or the other because you don't know what your priorities are and you don't know what your meaning in life is. <laughs> this is an interesting uh, background actually. I'm here next to a pest control uh, company. Uh, it's the evening time. I was just at work here at Strength Camp, came out here to shoot a quick video about how to make big life decisions. Okay, so if you don't know whether you should quit your job or you don't know if you should move to a different country or you don't know where you are in life, what your priorities are, what you should be doing. If that is the case, then I have one secret for you, one trick for you to understand what your priorities are and to make the right decision and at least a more optimal decision based on your primal instincts and what you really want in life. That secret is to alter your state of consciousness when you are making this life decision. Now what the fuck do I mean and how do I even figure this out? So when I do my 48 hour fast, so I pick two days out of the week to do a 48 hour fast. You can go look at that. Uh, I have a video on a 48 hour fast and when I used to do a 36 hour fast before that. So this is my fifth week. I'm actually right now in my fasting window, my 48 hours. I do it Sunday and Monday and today's Sunday. So the way I figured out that altered levels of consciousness actually allow us to make better decisions and prioritize in life is because of my 48 hour fast. So what I do is right before I break my fast, I sit and meditate and I think about what is really important in life. Now my other video talks about the details of what I feel, the epiphanies that I reach. I'm not gonna go into that here, but just briefly, I figure out what I really value in life because at that time, the 47th hour, you are only thinking about food because nothing else fucking matters. Now, if there are certain things that I still care about, even though I'm so hungry, that is what I care about in life. So that is the benefit of altered levels of consciousness. So if you are contemplating divorcing your wife or breaking up with your girlfriend or figuring out which college you want to go to, do you want to move away from your parents uh, to go to college? Or maybe you want to cheat on your spouse. Uh, whatever a big decision that, that you're facing, uh, it could be that you want to leave your parents to uh, go abroad to travel. Uh, it could be that you want to get rid of some really toxic people in your life because they're fucking you over and ruining your dreams uh, that you've wanted to achieve your whole life. Now fasting is not the only way to alter levels of consciousness. Another thing you could do is, so let me structure it a certain way. I look at four basic needs of human instinct. Four basic four basic needs of human survival which are very instinctual okay so these are shelter right a place to live food sex and put in there finding food or exercise uh, that we do today so let's start with shelter if you are in your home you are in a certain level of consciousness because your brain will associate the environment and will make you do certain actions based on that environment. So if you are in, let's say, the hood, you're probably not gonna say the N-word. And you're probably gonna stay a little calm and try to be discreet, okay? So your brain looks at your environment and makes you do those actions. So go away from your home. That is one way to alter consciousness. Go away from your home, go away from your city, travel a little bit, go to a different country or even get out of your fucking house. That is altering your level of consciousness and that will allow you to absorb perhaps a different culture if you go to a different city. It'll also enable you to explore a different environment and absorb that information, those beliefs, those value systems and perhaps change your mind if you are gonna make a certain big life decision or a big life choice. 
Okay, the second one is food, right? So we just talked about fasting. Go a day and go crazy. Eat like 20,000 calories, but be careful. Uh, eat a lot of fucking food, a lot of carbs, go all out, eat a bunch of donuts, ice cream. Uh, I like gelato. Uh, or or just, just gorge on something that you really crave. And then at the end of the day, think, do you still want to make that choice? Do you still want to do that big life decision? For example, quitting your job, right? Then do the other extreme. Fast for 48 hours like I do or do even less, do 36. If, you, if you've never fasted, do 24. That might be a big deal. And see what your decision, does it change? Right? So let's say you wanted to uh, move away from your parents' house because they're annoying the fuck out of you. And let's say you're really hungry after 36 hours. Do you still want to move away from your parents' house? Maybe they're feeding you. And now you know what it is to be fucking hungry. So that is a level of consciousness that you could achieve. The third one I want to look at is sex. So make, let's say you want to make a decision, for example, uh, you want to leave your wife or you want to dump your girlfriend or you want to just break up with her. Go a week without sex. Okay, now, if you go a week without sex and you try to think, should I break up with my girlfriend or should I uh, even cheating? If, should I cheat on my spouse now? Because you've deprived yourself of sex for that long, maybe you'll realize that that is something that you really need and you can't go without for a week. So if you divorce your wife or if you broke up with your girlfriend, it might take you more than a week to find a new girl. Unless you want to just fuck hookers and stuff, and, you know, that's cool too. But uh, if you want to do the same type of relationship thing, you might think twice about breaking up with her. Now, the third one is what I call uh, hunting. It's, it's exercising, right? So back in the day, we, weren't, we didn't have gyms when we were cavemen. We were hunting animals, and that is similar to exercising today when we do primal movements. So, for example, squatting and deadlifting and, and so on. Full body exercises, compound movements. Go do a crazy exercise. Like spend an hour, two hours and do a very circuit type, rigorous, strenuous workout. And at the end when you're dying on the floor and you're like <sighs> gasping for breath, think then about that decision. Do you really want to make that decision at that level of consciousness? Okay, so that is another way to alter your consciousness so you can make decision the right way. So for me, I've done all of those. And what I've learned is when I alter my consciousness, it allows me to look at what my survival instincts are, what I really need to actually live and prosper in a minimal way. When I look at those concepts, some of the things that I really care about, that I really prioritize, I don't prioritize anymore. I don't give a fuck about them, okay? If you want some of those examples, go look at my 36-hour video or my 48-hour fast video, okay? Now, there are actually some other levels of consciousness. Marijuana, uh, you can also do shrooms. You can do other psychedelics. So, for example, molly or ecstasy. You can also do LSD. DMT, which is ayahuasca, is, is a form uh, of, of a, it's a plant that actually has DMT in it. It's a, it's, a, it's a bark of a tree. I've done that as well. Now, I've tried all of these things. And what I've realized, because when I do psychedelics, I write down detailed notes like a scientist to understand what level of consciousness I attained and what changed in my physiology and my psychology that is different from everyday life. What are the major changes? And one time at EDC, I was on Molly, LSD, and marijuana at the same time. And one big thing that I realized is that I judge myself a lot. The way I realized that is because when I was on these three psychedelics, I stopped judging. And at times, I became the watcher watching me judge myself for judging so much when I'm not on these drugs. So I was still judging 
<laughs> as I am now, right? Another thing that I figured out about myself is that I see the world in a very negative way without being under the influence of these psychedelics. So when I was on this and I was traveling around in Vegas in this EDC rave festival, the whole world seems so positive. Now, a lot of you that are watching, you've been high before, you've done drugs before, you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, of course, man. But a lot of people don't try psychedelics because they're scared. Now, I'm not promoting psychedelics. I'm not uh, the, you know, Joe Rogan or uh, the, the dude that's uh, Duncan Truskell on Joe Rogan. He, he's a psychiatrist who does uh, a lot of psychedelics and reports them. I'm not some promoter of that, but I'm just telling you this is another way to alter your consciousness so you can realize what lies deep in your psyche what happens to your brain? What happens to your consciousness when you are in these different states? And practically speaking, what do you actually care about in life? So that is my take on how to make decisions, big, big life decisions, and how to make the right ones so you don't end up regretting shit all the time because you're not making them under different levels and states of consciousness. So, that's the video. Subscribe to my video sequence. Okay, if you haven't done so yet, I have an exclusive video series which is not available anywhere on the internet. It is on www.doctestosterone.com D-O-C-testosterone.com Okay, uh, that is where you will see my transformation. You will also, once you subscribe to get those emails, you will be able to look at the different factors that are killing your testosterone levels. You will get those videos and you will be able to address your problems in a very efficient way because I've already done the research for you. So check that out. This is Dr. Testosterone. I will see you next time.